Good morning. I am out today doing a loop from Horton. So I'm in Horton Forest at the moment. I'm assuming that it is pronounced that way. If it is pronounced differently, please let me know in the comments. I do have a bit of a hard time uh, sometimes knowing how to pronounce some English words, or, or sort of England or British words. Um, they are spelt in ways which I think is the correct way of pronouncing something, uh, and I don't always get it right. Um, so please do correct me. So I'm in Horton Forest and I'm doing a loop and I chose this loop because it's got a little bit of history to it on some of the paths so one of the paths we're going to walk on for a short bit is called Monarch's Way and I'll explain a little bit more about that when we get there and then another part is uh, on I've just lost my dog hang on a second come on Keeps this way is on uh, Stain Street, which is an old Roman road. So I don't know what that path is going to be like. So that is the route and then I come back to Houghton and it is a glorious late autumn morning, very fresh. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the beautiful scenery. This path, that, this path that I have decided to take, I think it's uh, somebody's bush fashion path, or what I call bush fashion path, because, oh, you can hear my uh, sat nav thingy, my guidance. So I use uh, Outdoor Active. I think I've mentioned this before on some of my other videos. To give me the path. I think the path I've been walking on which is on a route that somebody's uploaded, is part of a mountain biking route because it's just the way it like weaves in and out and stuff. And also where it said for me to turn, I was like, I cannot see a path here at all. Maybe in the summer you can, maybe just too many leaves have fallen. But like, look at this, this is definite, definite, um, mountain biking. I hope we don't come across anyone. That would be bad for them and bad for us. Something like this must be. I mean Kiva's having a great time. Little agility dog. having a bit of a mare with my devices because I'm trying to just use the things that I've got. Uh, admittedly I did buy an Insta360 Go 2 in addition but I wanted to have, I wanted to be able to do walks like this. I was already using my iPhone but I didn't want to have to carry anything particularly bulky to be able to share the places that I go. 
So I got the Insta360 because it's really small. I'll actually show you. I'll show you what the, how small the Insta360 is. Hang on a second. So this here is the Insta360 and you can see just by the size of my hand that it's quite a small little device. So that's its charging case. And then when you fold it all up, that's what it's like. And now you can see why I wanted to get something that was a pretty uh, powerful little filming device that isn't too big. In most of the films up until this point, I've used my iPhone and I've used this Insta360. And so earlier when they both weren't working, I was like, oh, fucking hell, this is why people have stuff that doesn't connect to the internet. Uh, but hey, hey, all good now. just come to a bit that I actually think is familiar from my brief, and I say, well it's really windy, my brief exploration of Bigner Hill. Uh, this looks familiar, vaguely familiar. I reckon up there is where the car park is maybe. It's glorious out there today. Might be too bright for you. I mean, I, I forgot to bring my sunglasses again. This app I'm using obviously has a delayed GPS because I'm 110 feet away and then you're telling me that I've missed the turn off of the route. That's unhelpful. I have to walk back now. It probably warned me before I was getting there. Take the next right, please. And I ignored it. This is part of Monarch's Way. I wonder though, if they had to bush bash <laughs> or bushwhack and they created the park. Attention, you are about to leave the route. How the route is 120 feet behind you. Oh yeah. You are back on the route. Nice one. Nice one there. Navigation. So, where I was just walking was not Monarch's way. This is Stain Street, which is part of Monarch's way. Interesting then. Oh, that's pretty good. Now I believe this is monarch's way. I am very confused <laughs> because first off I was walking down there because that's where I thought the sat nav, then, sorry, yeah satellite navigation I suppose that's right telling me where to go. Then I ended up over there because I thought that's where I was meant to go and then it turns out it was here. Monarch's way. Now this part of the Monarch's Way, which I'll tell you when I get to the end of this bit, how big of the section I'm walking, but it is apparently the route that King Charles II took um, when he was escaping in 1651 after the defeat of uh, defeat by Cromwell in the Battle of Worcester. I think it's Worcester. Again, another British name that I struggle to pronounce is Worcester. Now Worcester is spelt Worcester, but I believe it is actually pronounced Worcester.
furthest way is 625 miles. It starts in Worcester and it ends in Shoreham by Sea. And it passes through uh, Stratford upon Avon, uh, the Cotswolds, the Mendip Hills, and then of course it comes down to here. The bit that I'm walking through today is from Bigner Hill, because that's where we just were, to Earthen Wood. I am not quite sure at this minute how long that section is, but I will be sure to let you know uh, once we get into Earthen Woods. Why are you so loud still? GPS signal available. There we go. I've just come into Earthen Wood. This is the last little bit of the Monarch's Way. This part of the Monarch's Way, and I don't know how much more of it, is also on a pass called Stain Street. It was uh, created, I suppose created is the right word, made, whatever, in first century AD. I believe that the word stain is from the old Norse word stain, which I think is spelled S T. I-E-N-N, -N. I will make sure I put the, if I've got that wrong, I'll put the correct spelling in uh, just up here somewhere. And it was a way for them to differentiate between a paved Roman road and one that was muddy. It's cool to think that people like centuries before me and anyone else walking this particular path and I mean this goes for probably loads of paths in the UK that people have walked this path and whether they will in a thousand years so for me I'm walking in 2022 if the world is still earth is still existing in a habitable way will another average Joe be walking along this path I don't know the footsteps that have been placed before yours, how things would have looked, you know, the forest would have looked different. Things would have looked different. I don't know. For me, it's interesting. And that's, again, why I chose this path, because of the historical background. I wanted to take a moment to share my thoughts with you. One of the reasons why I decided to start sharing the filming that I do when I'm out and about, because in the past I would just film and it would kind of just stay on my phone. My aim in many ways is to be able to share the beauty in which I see when I go out into the world. I think so often we speed 
through life and the weeks just seem to flash by while I get my camera out and I'm filming I'm not just sort of taking that film or taking that snapshot and moving on I really do take a moment to look around and see and I like I look at it and to me I'm just like oh it's in it's in HD because that's like some of the colors that I see like over here that green I see doing this as a way of being creative and a way of sharing the beauty in the world that's around us I just want to share with you some of the beauty that I see and the peace that I get by experiencing it. So after filming that tree back there, because I was like, oh, that looks kind of cool. I started noti noticing really, really wet cow hats. And I was like, oh, fuck, really no. And then I looked and they're all over there, right? Now, that's fine because I don't have to walk that way. But I did think for a second that I was going to have to because of what the map said. However, my map reading abilities today have been pretty terrible. I think generally my map reading abilities are quite poor, but I tell you what, I was glad when I started walking. Oh my God, look at it. Look, look, look at that. Look at that slop. Uh, yeah, I was glad when I started walking that I was not going to be going near the cows. I mean, those cows are probably fine, but I'm not. <laughs> if there's like one rogue cow, I think that might be, I think that might be the end of me. One rogue cow. But yeah, it's more that I can't control how my body reacts for some reason. And they're just being curious. It's not their fault. You know how someone you, sometimes you feel like you've been somewhere before and you get deja vu? This is one of those places for me. I don't know what it is about this particular stretch. This area is giving me a, a case of deja vu. So that is not the way, but through there is. I mean, if I didn't have a map, I don't think I would have seen that. I feel like I'm on an animal path or something. Oops, tripping over. And you can probably tell that the temperature's dropped a little bit because I have now got my hat back on, my um, neck warmer, and when I'm speaking, you get a little bit of the thing, the vapour. Uh, <laughs> I don't feel too cold, like there's definitely a chill in the air. But, and I'm obviously walking at a pace. So, I don't even know if you can hear me because it's so noisy with the road next to us.
I didn't really know if I was going to get far enough away from the road and I really didn't want to do this while I was in my van but thank you so much for joining me for today's hike it's been really wonderful being able to share some of the beautiful things I've seen today and some interesting aspects of the journey if you enjoy my videos then please just like and subscribe you know the deal and uh, I hope to see you joining me each week as I release different videos of hiking and exploration with my pooch Kiva who is uh, very very tired and uh, ready to chill out as am I. Thanks.